This podcast contains explicit content. Hardly focused presents. Hey, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think the Act and Jack Show. Act. I told myself, Mario, take it easy. Jack. Well, that's just fuck a doodle dandy. Black Zach. Give me some buh, relative. You are listening to the Act and Jack Show. The balance beam. I'm a fan of the tan. I put a sock down here when I tan. Here to weigh in, DJ Pauly D. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Hack and Jack show. Uh, Chris Akiardi, Jack Gill, Zach Ward, Nate Fillers in the studio with me. Da, 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 da. Uh, wow. Uh, packed show. Uh, packed episode we got here. Uh, it is it is a crowded house, head on, head on. and uh, boy, is there just things and stuff to go over and talk about. But first, Ak, how are you now? Good, and you? Not so bad. I saw the trailer for Shorzy. Two two trailers came out for Shorzy today. Really? That's going to be a thing. Oh, you didn't know. I had no idea. I'm it's going to be a thing on my twice. <laughs> letter Kenny lore. Oh, okay. So there is a Shorzy spinoff that is starting in, in mere days. Huh. And uh, for the first time, we get to see Shorzy himself. Interesting. And, it, <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. It's really Wayne. <laughs> oh, it's crazy in that he looks, in no way does he look nor sound like Jared Kiso. <laughs> yeah it's um i am not a fan i'm gonna tell you that right now i'm i think i'm in the minority here i watching these trailers i don't think i'm gonna like the show and it's because mm. it's uh wayne has a certain lack of personality about him yeah this character is just wayne but with a personality right oh yeah i can see that being kind of off-putting yeah it's just it it's I, you're taking a gimmick and you're making a whole thing out of it. Like Joey Tribbiani was a funny character yep. for the, you know, four and a half minutes of uh, screen time he get in every friends episode. And then you gave him his own show. Mm-hmm. That's yep. a really good point. There are definitely some characters that do better as a little flavoring on the side. And when you give him too much attention in the, in the spotlight, it just doesn't work as well. Uh, but it does start on Hulu. Uh, I th- I want to say May thirteenth. Don't quote me on that, but it will be very soon. Uh, well, Z- uh, you know. Zach Ward, have you watched uh, Letterkenny before? Um, yes, I have seen a couple episodes. Um, so, like, I definitely get the appeal. It is very funny. Hmm. Letterkenny. Uh, is, if you've never watched Letterkenny, and at this point, I don't know how people have, have missed it. I can't accurately describe that show to anybody. It yeah. is hard. It's, it's, it, I, I love the, uh, the term. I think it's like what, I think you, you ter- call that a, a reverent humor mm-hmm. is what they would call that. Cause like, it's very just absurdist, but in a very like, you, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard to just like define how they do it, but it's just like so beautifully awkward and self-aware. Yeah, nothing happens on it. It's not about anything. <laughs> yeah, it's all, right. all all the humor is in how they talk, and how they talk is so unbelievably weird that I cannot possibly recreate or explain it. It's more about like the sociology. Right, yeah, it's between the, like the different classes. Yeah, so you have like the jocks. You have mm-hmm. like the like. I can't but, remember. Yeah. I haven't seen it in so so long, so I can't remember like the to a poor slob like me who is not a Canadian redneck. The show is ninety percent gibberish. Right? I've gone, yeah. I've gone entire episodes <laughs> where finally at the twenty-two minute mark, I'll go, "Oh, that's what that thing they've been saying this entire episode over and over again means." Like, wait, just, hurry out, not bad, good, you not bad. Hold on, wait, 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 we ain't got time for the pleasantries, all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's like really hard to follow. It definitely like everyone who told me about that show said it's one of the best shows they ever saw in their life. 
And it took me like two or three seasons to get into it. Cause at first I'm just like, this is just deeply confusing. I don't, I don't understand <laughs> yeah. what I'm watching right now. What are they saying? Is this in English? <laughs> <laughs> That's and fair. then you slowly start to like get a feel for all the slang and all the lingo and all the mannerisms, but it's just very weird. Uh, the uh, actress who plays Mrs. McMurray <laughs> apparently is on the new Star Trek series, Strange New Worlds. Oh, uh, it was <laughs> it was weird seeing a, a screen cap of <laughs> her wearing a, a Starfleet uniform, a, 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 like a, a, an original series era starfleet uniform yeah this might be one of the first instances i have seen of an actor from letter kenny appearing on like uh not i don't want to say mainstream show but maybe like i guess like an american show i've yeah. seen the, i've seen the opposite because uh pastor glenn was when he was a teenager he was part of the midnight society on are you afraid of the dark oh shit and he right. was uh, oh really Damn. I believe he was oh no, I'm thinking of a different guy. I'm thinking of the, the Mormon guy was uh on uh Trailer Park Boys, but that's also Canadian, so Well, uh, uh so that the Dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Mr. Dick. Yeah. Um I think that's uh is it Jacob Dick? Yeah. And then his wife Anita Dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is brilliant. Um uh, uh that's uh uh what's her face? Mrs. fucking Carl's mom from The Walking Dead, Lori. Yeah. So when I was looking at, at the cast list of the show before I started watching, I'm like, I don't recognize any of these names except for uh, Callie Wayne, whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, my, one of my favorite bits of trivia too is that it's not in production anymore, but there was a show based out of uh, Montreal called uh, 192, and it is a cop drama, um, hmm. and it stars Jared Kiso. And the guy that plays McMurray. <laughs> and they're both super serious police officers. Every episode is, you know, what, what you might see in like an American cop drama, for example. Like think like NYPD Blue. Uh, that show has received accolades for the most accurate depiction slash like dramatization of a school shooting. Oof. Wow. And it's okay. and the, the whole clip is on YouTube. It's like. 20 minutes long and it's just one continuous shot it's it's like well done i mean i I can't speak from experience none of us can speak from experience with a mass shooting event but it is so like tense and well done except the entire time it's jared keystone i'm just thinking to myself i've seen this dude's bare ass yeah, every single part of that sentence, starting with the word Jared Kiso, failed to prepare me for the next part of that sentence. <laughs> yes, yeah, I feel, I feel exactly the same way, Ak. Yeah, agreed. Back to you, Jack. <laughs> so there you go. There's a Shorzy spinoff coming um, very soon. So um, by the way, Zach, you sound good on that new mic. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I actually just listened to that uh, episode where you um, referenced sending me the mic. Um, so I appreciate the uh, the lead up here. It it is very nice, and it will come in handy. And so far, it looks like it works with um, my old lad laptop. Even though I definitely need to start using the new one. <laughs> yeah, I can smell the smoke from that computer from here, dude. Yep. <laughs> But, yeah, no, man, it's it's so slow now. I hate it. How old? It was so nice when I first got it. Of course, you know, planned obsolescence. I mean, like honestly, it's not that old. Um, it's a uh, let's see, what is it? MSI GP sixty two PE Leopard. Um, I know exactly what that is. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> leopard. Yes. Um, it's, it was one of the Dragon Series MSI um, laptops. So There's like a like it's like a mid mid um, level gaming laptop. Okay. Um, it's like I, I think I got it in like 2017 or something, or um, somewhere around there, 2015, 2016. So it's like lasted me a long time. But like, yeah, it's probably like I'm glad we have the new. I keep forgetting we have the new laptop. I just haven't like. I got used it yet. I'm letting uh, my girlfriend start doing her thing first, and then I'm gonna get started on my projects. Nice, right on. Nice. Can it run Crisis? 
The oh. new machine, probably. Okay. That's always the question you got to ask. That's the, that's the trick. Yeah. That is actually the standard that yeah. I have. So it's funny that you say that. Nice. Like, if it can run Crisis, then it's good enough to do everything else that we need. Nice. Yeah. Um, Zach, you know, I, we can hear Zach, which is nice. Uh, uh, it's always a, a bit of a challenge to hear him on that last microphone. So he's joined the Yeti mm-hmm. family and. Uh, well, I, I think I said in the last episode that makes it official. Uh, yeah. I don't know what we need Fro here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. An attempt was made. Uh, we've all attempted it and we've all failed <laughs> over the years. Oh, I've well, I'm, I'm just joined the roster. I think that's technically the first time I've attempted. <laughs> also, is this the first or the second time that we've Wow, that clip. Sorry, that clip is 20 seconds long. I, I didn't mean to play that. <laughs> that would have been 20 minutes of Fro saying his name, but Paul stretched. Oh, oh my wow. God. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Because <laughs> I did. I, I, took, just like, what is- <laughs> I took this. They call me Fro. And then I made this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that I know what it is, it's actually really funny. <laughs> yeah. like, at first, it's like, is that just, what is that? It just sounded like white noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that, uh, That's exactly what it sounded like. If you take any pop song and slow it down 200%, it sounds like Saiga Ross. <laughs> yeah. Don't speak is cool. Like, slow down. It's like, creepy. I love it. I got to try that now. It's so cool. The No Doubt song, right? Yeah. Oh, I got to try that. I gotta try that. I okay. If I may, if I may go off on another tangent, I saw a picture of uh, Kingston Rossdale mm-hmm. or Kingston, whatever his last name is. It's Gwen Stefani and, and uh, Gavin Rossdale's son, and he's like taller than Gavin Rossdale now. He's like sixteen. And he looks like he's thirty. Wow. <laughs> I I met this kid because when I met Gavin Rossdale, he had Kingston with him, and Kingston at the time I think was four or five and he was just doing laps around the room that uh we we were all in and then i see this photo of him and i'm like i i don't want to live anymore yeah i don't like this <laughs> i don't want to live on this planet yeah yeah oh well, that will that'll fuck you up uh yeah time mm. yep leslie jordan was recently a guest judge on uh, rupaul's drag race and one of the contestants was 18 born in 2004 and he just yelled how could anyone possibly have been born in 2004 <laughs> and i i agree with that yeah <laughs> i don't think it's possible yeah yeah it's uh it's jarring to think of how old we are now and it doesn't always hit me i always feel like yeah no i see like somebody my age i'm like they're an adult <laughs> uh, i'm over here like they're the, they're younger than me <laughs> two years it's taken me 13 minutes to, to mention this. I think this is the first time the four of us have all done a podcast together since 2008. Oh, wow. Probably. Yeah. yeah. We've all been on the show. I was like, we're, we're all part of the show, but we've yeah. not all been together. Oh, yeah. In the same room. Uh, how, however you want to define room all together <laughs> since 2008. Uh, uh, Zach Ward, go ahead. No, that's what I was like. I just like. I, I couldn't even remember. It was like, have we ever like all been on one show together before? I think I, I think so. I couldn't even remember. Wow, it's been a while. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Okay, great. Now, thanks, Jack. Now I feel even more old. Damn. I didn't even fucking remember that shit. God damn it. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm the oldest one to here. Say, so. too, like, well, I was just about to say, too, um, uh, like, I know that it's coming for me because, like, like the last month, um, I, like, pulled my, like, abdominal floor and it, like, hurt to, like, talk. It hurt to sit. It hurt to like move for like two days straight. And I'm just like, why is this happening? This has never happened to me before. What did I do to deserve this? Mm-hmm. And then I like also really hurt my foot. And I'm just like, why is this happening? Why? You're, I don't you're understand. just like that now. Yep. So you're basically, just, um, just... what I was thinking of was, um, oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Yep. <laughs> Everything yes. Zach was saying just reminded me of that clip. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how, dude. Don't feel bad. All I did the other day was walk, and I was sore for two days. Yeah, 
I, I, I wrenched my back very painfully standing up about two weeks ago. I turned on the news and I actually caught myself saying, okay, let's find out why I'm mad today. <laughs> oh, well, no, I've just always happening. been like that. I literally did that. And I, it's, it's funny, but it's true. When did you become so interested in politics, Nate? <laughs> the very moment I became old. Ah, very nice. Very nice future on the I mean, well, yes. Uh, I found out that I was old when I, uh, after work, Every night I go downstairs and I put on the news <laughs> and not just the local news. I watch the local news and then I watch like, you know, the CBS evening news or whatever, yeah. whatever the net, whatever network I just happen to be watching. Then I watch the national news and then I sit back and, and realize what is wrong with me. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> this country's gone down the shitter ever since yeah. Cronkite died. <laughs> gone are the days of david brinkley <laughs> bring back the hunter brinkley reports that's good there's so david brinkley is like considered one of the like pioneering like television news journalists like he was one of the first television news journalists and he um he, he's long since passed away but he retired in the 90s and no, uh, no, he retired in the 90s. He passed in, uh, in 2003, but during super retired <laughs> yeah, during the 96 election. No, this, I think, was like one of his last things before he, he signed off. And there's a, a clip on YouTube of him just he thought the cameras weren't rolling. Let's put it that way. And whoever was anchoring with him kept going, David, we're on the air right now. The cameras are rolling and Brinkley just keeps going. No, we're not. <laughs> well, I think I've seen that. Yeah, and the whole thing, he, he, he was convinced that they weren't on the air. And everyone's telling him, the cameras are on. The light is on, dude. And, and, and he just, he didn't care. Like, he wasn't swearing or anything. He was just, like, being a curmudgeon old man. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. He didn't care. He was David Brinkley. He invented television. He, he, he <laughs> like, uh, 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 journalists, like, they, they are trying to emulate Brinkley. So, like, he didn't care. He knew what his power was. So, mm -hmm. um, can I just, I, so I think we lost Zach and if you're watching the video version of this boy is a comical. Yeah. That's a good expression to be frozen on. <laughs> oh, there he is. Back. Wait. Okay. That's really funny. I, I, so like I heard all of that just now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, your your so, image, but like <laughs> your image froze and I'm like, wow, Zach is really into this Brinkley story. <laughs> <laughs> okay this will be this is gonna be hilarious whoever's watching this right now you're welcome <laughs> all right it's like uh, when you fell asleep holding like a spoon this kind of reminded me of that like so you're just holding a, a particular oh god position yes it's good times no it, it literally was just like I'm lost. Yeah, what it, it, was it? A spoon? Story. I thought it was a fork. Did I do? Well, this? I mean, every every spoon is a fork, right? I don't know what it was. I mean, that's deep. Could yeah. be anything. That is deep. It wasn't a knife. Unless I know it's a that fork, because then it's both. Everything should just be a spork. I agree. I I'm waiting for the day that I go into someone's house and it's like, hey, um, knife, spoon, or spork. It's like you have a. Sp I I will take the spork. Right, like, I think we need more sports in, we do. in, in this world. Because, there are, you know, yeah, I'm all about multi tools. It's just, it's you can do many things with it. It's just, it's helpful. It's good. Know. There are hard things in ice cream that we need to be able to take care of. Um, this yeah, is, like a little sp spelunking ice cream. Yep. Um, extravaganza. So this is how I know I'm old because y'all are talking about sporks, and I'm just angry at the concept. <laughs> yeah. Jack is just over here, like silently seething. Like, ah. no, no, we, we can't have sporks. I gotta put the macaronis on each individual Back fork. In my day, there were only two utensils: spoons were spoons, and forks were forks. We didn't put them together. <laughs> we didn't have these fancy knives that you see the kids using these days. Uh, to cut their food or otherwise. Ah, uh, so good. Um, speaking of things that piss people off, Polly D. 
<laughs> Good segue. So, TL. So Ack posts uh, on. Uh, sorry, Nate, you're not in it. I have a separate, just a, a group. It's that's okay. Ack and Zach and I. Um, that's fine. I'll just, and I'll just fuck off. Okay, <laughs> you do that. <laughs> but it's a group chat on Facebook, and uh, wow, he's really fucking off. <laughs> he's a man of his word. <laughs> um, uh, accents. All he sends is a photo. It's a, or a, a screen grab that all just it's from Fox News, and it just says DJ Polly D on inflation. And uh, I ask, or I say, this can't be real. And I like Zach's response to it. Zach says, have you seen this timeline? Why the hell wouldn't that be real? Yeah. Polly D is a, a shoe in for the 2028 Republican nomination. I mean, I wouldn't like I'm just waiting for that roster because the next one, like, how can you top it at this point? You just have to go like, like completely re- I, like they'll just revive um, the grumpy cat. Um Yeah. Grumpy cats, right? Yeah, they're just like you know, nominate him. Like, you know, I really chair. think the future of our politics is dumber than anyone can imagine. I don't yes. think there's a bottom. I think mm-hmm. uh, you could throw out the most insane, random, off the wall prediction, like Joe Exotic gets out of prison and actually runs a successful campaign for president. Possible. <laughs> I believe it. I would believe it. Yep. You could it, you could just or tell like me you're something. from the future and spin any insane story and I would just go, yeah, that sounds like something we would do as a nation. I believe you. <laughs> uh, Polly D talking some, to some jabroni. Yeah, I don't oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a robot. Oh, no. Ro- robot Zach. Ber- 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 <laughs> this is this is distressing. How long is it going to take him to get that sentence out? <laughs> this is. <laughs> I'm leaving all of this in the recording too. This is brilliant. <laughs> I think he's so. <laughs> All right. Well, well, no, Zach, uh, well, Zach tries to catch himself. Robots up. can laugh. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zach catches himself up. Uh, Polly D was talking to some jabroni on Fox News, and uh, they're talking about inflation. Uh, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez is where, like, it just came in clear. Like, the one phrase that we could understand is just, <laughs> oh, jeez. You can hear Zach go, yeah, David Brinkley, what a guy. <laughs> uh, Zach, if you can hear us, uh, try signing out of the room and then uh, jump back in. Let's see if that uh, catches you back up. Um, is <laughs> is I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> uh, normally, I, I would I would disapprove of such technical errors, but this one was just funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, he's talking to this guy. I don't know why. I don't know why Polly D was being interviewed on Fox News, uh, but he was. So the. Uh, the whole thing starts off with this. Here to weigh in, DJ Pauly D. <laughs> That's when you know you're about to get your money's worth. Oh, yeah. They they really went all out on this guest slot. Yeah. Uh, but I see Zach is back and he's changed his display name to God Damn It. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Hello. Hi, Zach. Uh, it was very hilarious Hi. when we were losing you. <laughs> I, I can't wait to watch it because I'm sure it was ridiculous. Because on my end, I could still hear you guys. I'm just like, all right, yep, nope, all right, you guys just can't hear me. I don't know if any of that even came across. We oh. could hear you, but it was stretched out really long. It was very strange. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. <clears throat> Say it takes like six or seven seconds for someone to like really emit a hearty laugh. 
uh, Zach was able to get that stretched out over 45 seconds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Call Guinness. <laughs> Not the beer. Uh, so anyway, uh, so the interview begins out with this. Here to weigh in, DJ Pauly D. And uh, begins with Pauly D talking about being an adult um, when he was a teenager and... Um, because initially they were talking about, I, I should preface this by saying, they were talking about um, kids who grow up. We were just talking about this ourselves. Kids who grow up, they become adults, and then they have to learn how to be adults. So mm -hmm. this is uh, Polly D weighing in on that. I think like everybody obviously is different because some people mature sooner than others. Some people establish themselves successfully faster than others. And being a parent, you obviously always want to support your child. But I get it. When is enough is enough. Um, I would say you got to have a, 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 a fine balance between tough love a little bit because you need to sometimes let them fall on their feet just so they can get back up and actually see what it's like. You can't always give them everything. You got to let them experience what it's like to earn something. Thing, to actually pay for something. And I do believe that if you pay for something, you appreciate it more. I remember my first car, um, my parents wouldn't buy it for me. Like they would, the best they would do is they would go half with me. It was $800. So I had to come up with $400. <laughs> yeah. So then I had to come up with $400 on my own. I'm like, wow, this is, this is the real world. I guarantee you none of that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the Jersey Shore way is like if your kid is six years old and gets in a drunken bar fight and like uh, <laughs> gets someone like someone dunks him in a jacuzzi or something like just the most deranged, trashy ordeal imaginable is tough love the Jersey way. Well, that and I, I don't know. I don't know anything about Polly D's uh, background, but I. I feel like there were a lot of silver spoons. Sporks. Sporks. A lot of silver sporks. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, even uh, like just like looking up his uh, background here real quick. It mentions nothing about him living in poverty or or having a you know tough childhood. It does say he was born in Providence. So maybe I can understand if he, you know, <laughs> grew up poor. But um, I, I don't know. It's. I don't think he's the best person to be taking that sort of advice from. If you were on a reality TV show about being a drunken whore when you were like 20, that's like, I, I feel like that's not the normal experience. Right. That is, that is a unique circumstance that most people don't relate to. <laughs> uh, when you have troll doll hair and you're known for having troll doll hair, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a hard time taking anything when you're trying to be serious. I'm going to have a hard time taking you seriously. Does he um, put DJ Polly D on his taxes? <laughs> that is. Yeah. <laughs> Polly is actually his middle name. D is his last name and DJ is his first name. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, we were in high school and there was this kid who called himself Mr. O. Do you remember that? Vaguely. And no. he, I, I think he did this as a joke, but at the supermarket in town, filled out a job application and was told, I remember the store manager came down because I was working there and I witnessed this whole ordeal. She comes down, she points out like, I'm a little confused by your name. You put down your first name is Mr. and your last name O. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> you actually did it you crazy nice. son of a bitch <laughs> mm -hmm. nice uh here's Polly d on inflation here we go gas now <laughs> is expensive man yeah. i mean and not only gas and you know better than anybody tank tops mm -hmm. your hair gel your hair gel probably costs more than a gallon of gas what are we doing about this inflation does joe biden understand how much this is killing this country it's getting out of hand it's, it's getting out of control I'm, I'm, I'm actually sitting back and i'm like what is going everything's going up my it, this sounds stupid but my pool guy now he wants more money i'm like what is going on everybody <laughs> wants more money it sounds your funny pool right? guy your poor pool guy you better give him a raise yeah, he I don't know what it. you guys are doing in Paulie's pool, but he, whatever he's making, double it. <laughs> he's uh, he's a real one. He's been with me since day one, so he gets the race. I I love his his response of guy. Tell, tell me about inflation. He's like, yeah, inflation's bad. 
Cool. Great take there, Polly. <laughs> and, and I'm rich. No, I don't like it. <laughs> like, I don't get why they brought him in to talk to him about serious things. Hair gel. Your hair, how expensive is your hair gel, Polly? This is relatable to middle America. No, that man puts horse semen in his hair. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> don't knock it until you try it. <laughs> we really should just be more open minded. Yeah. Don't 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 yuck someone's yum. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, speaking of uh, n- not knocking it until you try it, uh, Polly D on tanning your manhood. Here we go. A lot of guys oh, into boy. this masculinity thing are now tanning the man. I thought, who better to ask than you, yeah. who knows everything about tanning? Is that something you do? Is that something you support? Well, I'm, I'm a fan of the tan, like, absolutely. But I think there's an actual reason why they do that. Why? I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, like, stimulate the testosterone or something? Does that – I heard you, it raises your testosterone, like, 200%. Am I wrong? I, I, you might be wrong. You might be right. I don't know. I haven't seen the documentary. <laughs> but I think you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> I put a sock down here when I tan. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's a tube sock, all right? Yeah, I don't – understand why fox news is so into the whole tanning your balls thing lately it's like, so, um, they're catering a lot to the secretly gay uh and angry conservative uh base i guess i don't know because have you seen that like that the, the trailer oh yeah for that thing it's, it's fascinating like, it's like it is really gay. It is like it is extremely gay. Like a they're very, really they're the wow. demographic is called the Madison Cawthorn. The so straight you're actually extremely gay demographic. You know that sort of frat bro who is like you know I said no homo. So when I rubbed my dick against your face in college, that was just two bros hanging out. Like yeah. and this is oh yeah like you know right. It's it sounds weird. It sounds like. I'm being facetious, but there is like a, a demographic of like yeah. straight men yeah. who are genuinely heterosexual doing extremely unambiguously gay things like as a joke and also while being very homophobic. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. It's, it's weird. hard to understand why that's a, sizable demographic of conservative men these days and yet it is <laughs> uh, i didn't even realize this was a thing i i did it. yeah no yeah i don't follow yeah, fox news happening. at all yeah i see there are a lot of like twitter follows like um aaron rupar is a good one like these are people who they do a lot of watching like trump rallies and and you know uh tucker carlson specials and then they, they tweet about it basically saying so that you can know what they're talking about without having to give them views. And sometimes they're just deeply fascinating. Like it's, oh my God, th- like it's just looking into another world. It's very strange. Mm-hmm. And then you have Polly D. Strange. Yeah. And then you have Polly D. And, and this, as dumb as it is, it seems very in character for Fox News to me. I feel like finding weird like ostensibly blue collar presenting and yet very wealthy and out of touch and weird circumstance having celebrities is like their thing you know that's that's trump in a nutshell people look at him and think he's right, yeah. one of us he's just a normal guy but the only reason he seems like a normal guy is because he's a demented racist in every so, other way, he's a gold-plated billionaire who doesn't buy his own groceries. You know, he's he's the least relatable to an average American of any human being alive, but he sort of has that aesthetic that makes it seem like he does. Yeah. Um, have you guys heard of the term parasocial relationship? Yes. Yeah. So, like, this is pretty much, like, when we look at these kinds of things happening in like society and like the politics in general, it's like you totally, you can see that like a lot of people that support some of like, like Trump supporters in general, like in my opinion are very much those like, yeah, like I see the, something in him or something in that, mm-hmm. like that's power right there. That's something that like I want, want for myself. Yeah. And, like, 
you know, like th- that is someone that does not care anything about you, but that doesn't, they don't care because they see themselves in someone who is just going to benefit blindly from their adoration. Yeah. Which is kind of sad, but like that is just the state of uh, here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All right. I think I'm um, getting close. I'm seeing, I'm just scrolling through my past history to try to see if I could find that trailer for the <laughs> ball frying special on a. It is <laughs> really. In, in case you want to play it, it's at any point, Jack. I will post it in the Facebook group. Okay. Uh, Up Rocks, too, has uh, an article about Polly D appearing on uh, Fox News. Uh, the Jeroni in question, uh, Jesse Waters. He was on Jesse Waters' prime time. And um, uh, some of the tweets here that are mentioned are uh, uh, j- just brilliant. Um, uh, Hedge Eye said, when Fox News brings out DJ Polly D, you know the markets are fucked. <laughs> uh Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to pull this up. Ack. Um, so, Nikki McCann Ramirez. Uh, let me get the uh, let me get the thing here set up. Let's do some screen share. Thanks, Nate. Okay, here we go. A, it just, was, <laughs> just needed it. You know? I appreciate you. Okay, here you go. I promise you are not prepared for Tucker's latest montage. Here we go. Fuck. Once a society collapses, then yep. you're in hard times. Yep. Well, hard iron sharpens iron, as they say. And those hard times inevitably produce men who are tough, men who are resourceful, men who are strong enough to survive. And then they go on to re-establish order, and so the cycle begins again. Yeah, a whole lot of dudes. Yeah, it's just fascinating. Like, there's, it's this. There clearly, Tucker Carlson is someone who is very heteronormative, very homophobic, hates anything that is a deviation from the norm. You know, this oh, yeah. is in in his mind the pinnacle of normal masculinity. Uh-huh. But it's it's super gay. Like that is incredibly yeah. fucking gay. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't say yeah. that derogatorily. It's just extremely gay. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, like def- definitely like g- yes, I can see how gay it is. Like it is very hard to unsee how gay it is. Yeah. And that's like uh, you know the funny thing to me is that like this seems to be something also that is part of like the whole like heteronormative kind of like thing because like um i was at one of the places i go to at work i walked by this um and the first couple months i walked by this guy had this calendar of like just like these manly like um like shirtless like beefy men and it was like a calendar like a uh, uh, men like wearing kilts and stuff there's like like real men like quotes that sounded like very homoerotic mm-hmm. and then like I walked by a couple more months, and then I saw he put up another calendar of just, like, women. He's just like, okay, I see what happened here. This guy obviously got made fun of for having, like, the manly men calendar. And he's like, well, I, I like women, too. Because he has, <laughs> there's literally no reason to have two calendars next to each other. But, like, to me, that is the kind of man that would actually watch this yeah. and... And get something from it. Like, and like, I gotta start to me, tanning that my is, balls right away. <laughs> I need, oh, like, Tammy, Tammy, sign me up for the spa. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I may uh, bring it all for full circle, Danny Bonaduce style. Danny Bonaduce. Uh, we were oh, talking man, about that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, I mean, he uh, tangent, but he's not doing too well. Uh, Danny Bond. Oh, no. He he's taken a leave of absence from his uh, morning radio show. He's got some sort of neurological issue. And I saw a photo of him. You know, Danny Bonaduce jacked, absolutely jacked. 
He's lost all that muscle mass. Oh no. He's like his and oh, he's walking wow. with a cane. It's I I didn't recognize him at first, but as far as I understand it, he's the he's the same old Danny Bonaducci just um I don't know. The guy likes when people hit him. So I think he's just oh, been oh, hit a few normal. too many times. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that would definitely do it. <laughs> like he's the kind of guy who'll just like uh, you know, walk into a bar, pick up an empty beer bottle and then just smash it across his head yeah. yeah like he thinks he's in jackass yeah or he yeah. thinks he's danny bonaducci because he is <laughs> oh, yeah, that's but anyway i i to bring it full circle mcmurray on uh letter kenny isn't it hinted at that he's gay and he's just like he's yeah. trying so hard to not out himself yeah, yeah. that's probably this same type of character, yeah. Yeah. Who would be super into something like this. Wait, hurry out, not bad, good, you, not bad, hold on, wait, 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 we ain't got time for the pleasant trees, all right? Also, I've kept this up here on, on the screen. What is blocking this dude's junk? That's the uh, the tanning machine. Okay. It's, it's like a special... It's, it's, um... Yeah, tanner for your balls, I guess. And then you use it to charge up your laser. <laughs> I seriously thought that was like a Wiimote. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of look like a Wiimote. It honestly. does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, very good. So uh, we've learned a lot from Fox News. We've learned a lot from Polly D. Um, yeah, you know, um, check your kids at the inflation door and, you know, sunlight on your testicles. Indeed. I put, tan, you're not when I tan. Every day. I put a sock down here when I tan. Every day. I put a sock down here when I tan. Yeah. You're doing it wrong, Polly. Yeah, there you go. Valuable advice for for both things. All right. Uh, let's uh, take a moment to regroup. We'll come back. Uh, Mike Lindell in the news yet again. What else is new? And I have some brief yet hilarious audio from him. So uh, we'll have that for you. Stick around. <laughs> I have such a hard time wrapping my head around the anti-vax mindset. Any doctor tells me, hey, we have a goo. Want us to inject you with it? I go, fuck yeah. I don't care what's in it. Just give it to me. Just yeah. inject me with the goo. You, if you say my life will be materially improved by that goo flowing through my veins, fucking give me the goo. Hardly focused.